Hi everybody, I'm Tony DeFada. I'm the Director of Education at the Walter Anderson Museum of Art, and I'll be giving you your tour today. Walter Anderson was born in New Orleans, Louisiana in 1903. He was the middle child of three sons. Uh, their mother was an artist, she was a potter and painter, and taught her sons that they should make art every day. She told them that if you surround yourself with beautiful things, that you'll have a more beautiful life. Walter took this one step further and felt that if you're an artist, it's your duty to create things uh, to surround people with so that their life will be more beautiful. When Walter was just 19 years old, he carved this box for his father. His father wasn't as keen on his sons becoming artists. He wanted them to do something more practical. So Walter made this box for his father just to show him that he could make things that were useful and also things that could be sold for money. He used images from Walter's favorite book While at the Pennsylvania Academy, Walter wanted to spend his time out in nature. He believed that artists should paint and draw what they loved. And because he loved nature so much, Walter would uh, skip class basically and go to the zoo and draw zoo animals all day long. His drawings were so good that he was able to get a fellowship and study in uh, Europe, in Spain and France, where he was inspired by the, the older artwork in the history museums. He felt that ancient cultures were closer to nature, and that's what Walter wanted to do. He wanted to use his artwork to bring people closer to nature. While Walter was in Europe, his family purchased 24 acres of land in Ocean Springs, Mississippi. His mother wanted to start an artist colony, and Peter, Walter's older brother, became a master potter. Shearwater became a pottery that was owned and run by the family and is still uh, running in Ocean Springs and has been open for about 94 years. Uh, Walter, when he got back to Mississippi, he started decorating pottery that his brother Peter made, and he and his brother Mac also created these molds to make figurines, which they called widgets. In 1937, Walter Anderson suffers a mental breakdown brought on by cases of malaria and undulant fever, coupled with the devastating loss of his father's death and the loss of a federal courthouse mural commission. Walter then goes through a three-year period of stays in mental hospitals, both in Maryland and Mississippi. After Walter's three years of having issues with mental illness, he uses something called the seven motifs to retrain himself how to draw. The idea was if you could draw these seven lines, you could draw anything in the world. They were the straight line, zigzag line, wavy line, S-curve, half circle, circle, and spiral. Walter and his wife Sissy then decide to move into her family's family home in Gautier, Mississippi with their four children. This becomes one of the most productive times in Walter's life where he creates large watercolor paintings, block prints, wood carvings, and watercolor paintings.
Unfortunately, Walter didn't make his trip to Tibet. While he was in China, someone stole his backpack that had all of his money, his supplies, his papers, and his passport. He had to make his way back across China to have money wired to him so he could get a ticket to come back to America. Upon Walter's return to Ocean Springs, he discovered that the city was building a community center and approached the city government about doing a mural for them. He wanted it to be his gift to the people of Ocean Springs. He did many sketches and presented them to the city council and they were approved. Walter didn't want to be paid for it, but they had to give him something, so they wrote him a check for one dollar, which it is said that he never cashed. One of the most unique things about the mural is Walter's decision to put a self-portrait into it. Um, he decided to put himself in as the uh, person rowing the boat, which is very appropriate because Walter spent so much of his time rowing his boat out to one of the barrier islands, Horn Island being his favorite. After 18 months of work, Walter created the mural and finished it by 1951. This is the skiff that Walter would row out to Horn Island. Horn Island was 12 miles off the coast of Ocean Springs and Walter would row every stroke. He would use his boat to sleep under if it was raining or if the bugs were too bad, and he would eat cans of food, sometimes which the labels washed off and he didn't know what it was. He also created a lot of artwork out on the island that he kept to himself and nobody knew about it until after his death. In 1965, Walter decided to row his boat out to Horn Island with a hurricane on the way. He tied himself to a tree just to see what it was like to go through the full force of a hurricane on Horn Island. He survived, but a few months later, he went to his wife um, and had grown very ill. She took him to the hospital in New Orleans, where unfortunately he died in 1965 at the age of 62. After Walter's funeral, his wife Sissy and her sister Pat decided to go into Walter's cottage. After Walter's funeral, Walter's wife, Sissy, and her sister, Pat, decided to go into Walter's cottage and go through his things. They found it filled with artwork. You could hardly move in the place. And there was one door that was locked. They couldn't find the key through the door, so they got a hammer and smashed the lock off the door. When they opened it up, they were so amazed. It was a beautiful mural that Walter had painted that nobody knew about until after his death. They also found a box inside containing thousands of paintings that Walter had done for himself out on Horn Island.
There is much more art in the museum, and we hope to see you in person really soon.